This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Gentlemen, there he is. Here are two people on on Lyrica at the same time, right? At the same time. At the same time. You take more than I do, though, right? Yes. You take two a day. Two a day, seventy-five milligrams each. Oh, really? I take a hundred once a day, and I do it at night because it puts me to sleep. Really? Oh yeah, it makes me drowsy. Yeah. Does it help you with your feet? With my feet, it, it helps. Yeah. I, 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 I would say not 100%, but it, you know, it helps. It's better. It's better. If I decide to go for a walk, folks, what we're talking about is a thing I use. It, it's called pregabalin. I don't know if you use it. Right, right. That's what I use. And uh, it is a drug that we take for neuropathy, which I have. I have numb feet. So right. I, I take it, and it, what it helps in for me is I like going for walks. That's what I'm okay. doing. Of course, I'm not going to do it today. Okay. Too hot. It's, oh God, I'm not going out there. Are you kidding me? It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, um, I I like to take walks, and I find this helps me walk better. Yes. You know, yes, I, stu absolutely. I stumble a little bit because of the drug, and I have to be careful going upstairs because of the drug. But basically, it keeps my feet from hurting while I'm walking. Right. Yeah. I have trouble going downstairs, not going up, going down. Oh, you, me too. Going up, I, I always like to hold on to a rail in yes. any case. Wow, you're getting old too, huh? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, remember, I guess so. I, I, I remember when I used to just, there was a set of stairs and I just run down them. Oh, yeah, without even thinking. Right? I would Without even thinking. Yeah, yeah, and I would run up them. And I no handles, sure. no, no, you know. Now before I get to a set of stairs, I gotta look and see: do they have a handrail? Right. And if they or don't, a wall that, or a wall that I can lean against. Uh, yes, or a thing that I can lean against somewhere. Right. Uh, if, when I go in the park here, up to Morningside Park, they have some stairs with the, with the handrail, and they have some without oh, really? without that, and without stuff on the side. So I find myself going down the stairs kind of sideways. One step at a time. One step at a time, sideways, because I don't want to do it forward because I might then slip off of it. You right. Know what I'm saying. Okay. This is what you got to put up with, folks. Get ready for it. It's coming to a uh, theater near you. And and quicker than you would think. And quicker than you would think. Yes, we would like to think that it was not uh, a problem, but it is. Uh, yeah. And it happens to all of us, and we get older and. Uh, uh, you know, you're only what, 65, 66? 65. 65. Only. Yeah. Oh, well, I say only because I'm 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 81. Right. 81. I I I think about that, and it just makes me go, wow. I'm either going through some really bad shit here, <laughs> or I'm lucky that I've lived this long. Right. Right, right. You know, a lot sure. of other people are falling, bes bes you know, by the wayside with me. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, Alex. You yeah, know, you're yeah. grateful that you're alive, yeah. and you're miserable that you're alive. Well, the good news is I'm alive, and the good news is, bad news you're is, alive. I'm alive. You know, right. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. But, uh, and I, you know, I, all I'm thinking about is, what's to, what do I have to look forward to? See, I may as well find a gun and t put it to my mouth, right? No. no. But what do I have to look for? You probably miss anyway. You shoot yeah. yourself and miss. Where Jews are bad with firearms, okay? Right. Yeah. But if I, um, you know, all I have to look forward to is getting older and more of this crap, you know? And, right. And every morning you wake up and go, what is it today that's going to get me? You know, am I suddenly right. going to have that heart attack? You know, whatever. My heart's in great shape. 
Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, it's got a few little problems. I got, got a stenosis, but it's very minor. Right. Uh, and that's it. You know, I, I my cancer was taken care of. It looks like it's completely gone. Right. You know, uh, and uh, so I'm wondering what what's going to get me. You know, so now, well, okay, so nothing gets me, and right. now now I'm ninety. <laughs> Have you seen people in their 90s? Yeah, they're usually in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. and, and suppose I make it to 100. No, I don't want to live that long. My mother lived to be 100. My grandparents lived to be 102 and 104. Wow. They were married 81 years. Really? Yeah. You would have thought marriage would have killed them. Yeah, no kidding, right? You know, uh, I mean, God damn it. That's, that's, uh, it's, uh, hmm. And the neat part was I towered, towered over both of them. My grandmother was like 4'8", my grandfather was like 5 foot. I well, was huge next well, to them. Well, they were probably taller when they were younger, right? Uh, I don't know. I didn't know them when they were younger. Yeah, well, how tall are you? 5'6". Five, 5'6". Six. Five, six. So you're short, actually. Thanks. Thanks so much. Well, no, you're Al Pacino pint size. Right. Thank you. I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, let me ask you this, okay? Because you're an actor. Right. Why is it the major movie actors that we admire and love, like Al Pacino and so on, are, like uh, 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 Tom Cruise, are all short? And we never perceive of them as short because on film they don't show up that way. Right, 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 right. But why is it that there? That it seems to be a short person's business? Because growing up, we didn't have the height or the strength to defend ourselves, so we had to act our way out. Oh, I see. Okay. Did, did being short ever bother you as a kid? Yes. It did bother yes. you? Yes. I, I got a pull-up bar and used to hang from it to try and stretch myself. You thought that would work, huh? Yeah, it didn't work. Wow. Wow. Didn't work. Wow, almighty. Yeah. I, I, uh, 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 I love, is there anything when I was growing up about me physically bothered me? Um, no, there wasn't. It was probably just that I was Jewish in a non-Jewish neighborhood. Right. You know, that Much kind of, like now. Much like where you live now. Yeah. Yeah. Not you in a non-Jewish neighborhood now? Uh... Basically, I'm in a non-Jewish neighborhood. I don't know that it's, uh, uh, you know, if it matters that much. Cause it was it? Well, I don't know. Um, excuse me, folks. I was just trying something, and I, I pulled down something, and I shouldn't have pulled down something. I was trying to up his sound. See that little thing up in the corner, folks? Hold on a second. I just want to up your audio here. Okay, there we go. Um, How's that? Much better. So anyway, um, what was I going to say? So where were we? Oh, I, about being Jewish. Yeah, uh, I was talking to Bubbles about this yesterday. It's on a future interview, folks, that we haven't right. done yet. Uh, uh, he uh, he asked me about that, about growing up Jewish, and if it ever bothered me, and you know, and I said, you know, when I was growing up uh, in in uh, an all Italian neighborhood of right. North of North Beach in San Francisco. Uh, I had kids uh, yell at me, "Dirty Jew," you know. And, and I, I grew up. I grew up in an Irish Catholic neighborhood. And you were. And we were all friends. We all played together until they started going to parochial school. Oh God! Yeah. And then I was the devil. You know, you, you got to remember this is nineteen sixty. I never, I never heard that that they taught that Jews were the devil. Oh, that we had horns growing out of our heads. We killed Jesus. Apparently, my family was directly involved. Oh, no, no. That, yeah, that, that, I, that I always got was, your people killed Jesus. Right. And I went, okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't have an answer for it, except for right. something that would have got me beaten up like, well, if he comes back again, we'll, get, we'll do it again. You know, uh, I mean. Uh, yeah, good thinking. You don't want to do any of that crap. No, no, that's not much of a comeback line. No. So, no. uh, so I, I, you know, I, I was uh, somewhat uh, 
uh, bothered by that, you know, with the dirty Jew thing and your pe people killed Jesus. But then I went to my father. My father was kind of a wise guy, and he just said, "Ah, just that's the way they are. Don't don't be bothered by it. And just you know, they don't they don't really mean anything by it. It's just something they uh, that they learn." And, right, right. And something so, they're parroting. So I grew up never really feeling paranoid about anti-Semitism. You know how some people are like, oh, he's anti-Semitic. Oh, right, the right, Jews right, are right. bringing it. It's anti-Semitic. I never was one of those Jews. No, I, me neither. I always went, there are those people who are anti-Semitic, and they're one group, and then there's a whole other group that aren't anti-Semitic, and I'll hang out with them. Right, right. You know. And they're the majority anyway, those who aren't anti-Semitic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Although recently I got a little upset by the fact that we have somebody on this network, on our little thing doing a show, and he always, when he jokes about me, it always seems to be cheap jokes. Oh, really? Yeah. Now you... Give me an example. You know, just, I can't even give you an example. It's just always cheap jokes, and he doesn't realize that kind of that that does bother me slightly right you know right. i i don't know why i guess it's because i mean you knew me right back right, then sure was i cheap no no you bought us all breakfast yeah every time we did the show I, the reason i don't have money today is because i wasn't cheap no you were not cheap at all you know no you paid well for the gigs when we would do the warfield yeah or any of those places and you were very generous when it came to going out to eat after the show. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I just always was, I, I get a little bothered when I hear like, a, you know, a cheap joke about me right. being a Jew. Because I, I just never was. And, no, I, and I don't know any Jews that are cheap. Except I, I, my Uncle David. I, look, I, I, I've known some, but I'll tell you what, what it was. They were really older Jews. I mean, like... Uh, Maybe I had an uncle that was cheap or something like that, right. or, or uh, you know, uh, but... Uh, but they lived through the Depression, so that's why they were cheap. They were afraid of going without. Well, you, you want to talk about the Depression. I always I said, I grew up, I didn't grow up in the Depression, but I grew up as a result of the Depression. Right, right, uh, right. That, that everything when I was growing up, was an indication of, of uh, like, I'm sure there are things we did during the pandemic that will now hold over for many, many years, okay? You know, just attitudes, feelings, you don't want to get too close to somebody, you don't want to touch them, you know, you don't want to shake right. hands, you're still going to do the elbow bump, you know, whatever. Uh, there was also that for the depression. And I remember my mother always keeping the refrigerator absolutely jam-packed with food. Right, right. You know, almost so that if you went in there, there was like this wall that was just flat of food all shoved into the refrigerator. Is that right? Absolutely. So, I mean, there was that kind of attitude about, you know, we knew what it was like when it was hard to get stuff. Right, uh, right, right, and, right. And we're never going to let it happen again because this refrigerator is going to keep us alive for the rest of our life. Right, right. No, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Now, did, did your mother call it a frigidaire? Oh, of course. Yeah, my grandmother called every refrigerator a frigidaire. Which is interesting because that was a brand name. Right. It, it was a refrigerator, but it was a brand name, and people called it a frigidaire because everybody pretty much bought frigidaires. Right, 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 right. It was the most popular refrigerator at that time. Yeah, but I, I, I'll tell you what they, my, my parents called it. They didn't call it a refrigerator. What, an icebox? Icebox, yeah. And so I grew up calling it an icebox. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now I, I call it a refrigerator, but if I called it an icebox, my wife would look weird at me like, what are you saying? I'm going to go to the right. icebox. I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, well, what happened is you used to have a guy, and he came to your house uh, every day or something like that, with a big, and brought block of ice. Big, big chunk of ice and put it in the top of the refrigerator. Right. Right? And then it would it would melt. I think it took about three days to melt or something. And then he would come back and put another one in there. Right. You know? Uh, uh, and that was a whole profession that when, when the refrigerator came in, went out the door. But for many, but even after that, my parents kept calling it an ice box, not a refrigerator. Sure. 
That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are we boring you kids out there with this old folks talk about what it was like when we were young and they used to call that thing an icebox? <laughs> Well, what is your what is your medium age uh, for your listeners? Well, I don't think it's very young, you know. You think you think it's our age? Well, you, Marjorie and I were thinking of starting a new show called "Nobody Wants to Listen to Old People." <laughs> you know, the older I get, uh, the older I get, the harder it is to get an audience. Uh, you know, I see it. I've seen it dwindle here on my show. Well, I, I think it's doing a little lot because Trump's not in office anymore and people don't, you know, want to hear about politics now. Right, right. People aren't as angry. Yeah. But uh, also, I think uh, the fact is I'm older. And they they, I, they come on, they see a guy like me, and they go, oh, I don't want to listen to him. Right, yeah. right, right, right. You know, so I, uh, I, uh, I, I would say the average listener I've got is at least over 50. Okay. You know? Which is fine, you know, look at us. You know, right. talking to a 65-year-old comic. Right, right. You and know. we're still lucid. And we're, I think so. I'm trying. Most of the time. I'm trying to be. How's, the, the, how, how's the weather up there? Is, is it as hot as it is down here? I went out this morning mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. to do some food shopping, yeah. and I was dripping sweat. I was already just sweating the... Schwitzen like a hazard. Well, right now, here in New York, according to my watch, but not according to uh, my Alexa, uh, it's 97 degrees. 97. Is it humid? Is that including the humidity factor? It's humid. It's not horribly uh -huh. humid. It isn't oppressively, oppressively humid. humid. No. Right. At least I think so. What I have, but here's what we do. I have this big, big apartment, as you know, about 2,500 square feet. Right, in the, huge. In the front, we got a living room, we got a dining room, we got a kitchen, we got a pantry, we got a bathroom, we got a foyer, okay? Right. And then there's this large swinging door that we can keep open at all times, but we close at this time of the year. And really what we're doing is living in the back uh, three bedrooms. Really? Okay. Uh, because, I mean... We go. I go out there. I go out there to make coffee or to cook dinner or to do something. And I walk out, and it's like, Wah. right, you know? right, 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 right. But the reason I don't, we don't do it there, is because I can air condition this room. I can air condition the bedroom and have it kind of go down the hall, okay, right, right by keeping the door open. But I, uh, uh, I, I can't air condition. The front, because if we turn on the air conditioners there, they're really not going to do a lot. It's a big, big living room. Right. And and it's it, it's not going to keep the place that cool. It's just going to be a waste of money. And if I turned on all the air conditioners in the in the in the front, you'd be broke. Well, I'd be broke number one, but more than that, it wouldn't work. You know, it wouldn't do the job. Oh, really? Yeah. But I mean, also, what it would do is blow the fuse downstairs every time. Oh, I, absolutely! Yeah, I, every time. So I'm, I'm very careful. I find that I can't. I have the air conditioning on here, but I can't put it on in the guest room because it might blow the fuse in the basement. And if it does it at one o'clock in the morning, there's nobody around to go down and reset it. Right. You know. So. Well, uh, you know how to do that, don't you? Don't you know how to reset a breaker switch? Sure, but I can't get down there. Oh, you can't get into the basement. I can't get into the basement. That's right. Oh. So you know, it, it, it's pretty. So I we've had to do this little balancing act, as it were, right. with, our, with our air conditioning. But let me ask you something. When last time we talked, you were going to go to the dentist about that right. about that tooth that that uh, uh, I think broke off. What did you find out? I went and they did a cleaning and an assessment. And I have another appointment on July 10th, and she wants to pull a bunch of the bottom teeth because they just rotted out and give me some sort of plate. Denture? Yeah. Why it, it, pulling all the teeth? I don't know. Well, there's not that many. What do you See, mean? See, this is a partial on the bottom. A, a partial? On the bottom, it's a partial. There's only like maybe 
six seventeenths on the bottom. And they got to pull all of them. Well, you know, once you pull the eye teeth, I mean, you got to just you might as well just pull the rest of them. Oh boy. So we'll see how it goes. I, I go July 10th, you know, and I have an appointment and she'll probably fill some cavities and we'll see where it goes from there. I, I, but I had a cleaning, Alex, yeah. and it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. Right. She didn't use that that claw thing that they poke with. She right. didn't use that. She used some sort of sonic. Yeah, yeah, they use a sonic thing. They, and they go and it doesn't that. hurt at all. And then they kind of finish a little bit of it off with the pick because they right, the right, pick. right. But not not like they used right. to do it. Right. When was the last time you had your teeth cleaned? Nineteen oh three. Oh, okay. So, it, but so, what did they say about? It? Remember, I told you about a a, a clipper. To right, a clipper. I, I I brought it up. She didn't say anything. I mean, it was my first appointment with her. Mm -hmm. So let's see how it goes from here on in. Yeah. But she took my insurance. Let's just see if the insurance pays. Yeah, yeah. Well, it pays at least fifteen hundred dollars of it. You, know. you think so? Yeah, I think you have to pay fifty percent, and then it pays. But it pays fifteen. Uh, I I don't know your plan actually. What do you right. have? What do you have? Do you know? I have Mass Health. Mass Health. See, I don't know. What, Mass Health is a different situation. You got a good situation up there with Mass Health. Right. You know that right. was the that was the. Uh, what could we call it, the uh, template for Obamacare. That's right. That's correct. And it was set up by uh, Romney. Right. Yeah. Right. Of when all people. Governor, when he was governor up there. Yep. yep. Of all people. Yeah, so I, so I don't governor. know. They, they may have given you good dental coverage. I have no idea. You know? I have no idea either. I mean, I'll find out. Yeah. Uh, but they may have given you good uh, good dental coverage if, because that right. plan is supposed to be like a, a gold standard for state. Now you have an implant, don't you? I have th three implants. Did they hurt? No. No. Don't they drill into your jaw? Yeah, but you, they put in Novocaine. That you don't feel it. You know what they do? What they do is they don't. Do they drill into your? I think they do a little drilling, and then what they do is. The post they put in is is screwed in. It's like it, when if you look at your uh, at my at my, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It's just they screw it in. Do you know that implants uh, is not new? Oh that, really? That it goes back to Pacific Islanders and tribes. Is that right? They used to take a piece of like bamboo or something and drive it into the uh, oh god into the mouth oh, I god. know this is without Novocaine and then they would put like some kind of fake tooth on it yeah this is without me but you know it's not some something new but they do it they do it very I, uh, I there's no pain to it no pain at all not even even afterwards no pain but they're really expensive aren't they yes really expensive. horribly horribly so right you know uh, 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 mine cost about uh, this doctor because I had insurance cost about three thousand dollars. That's one. with insurance. Yeah, the other ones cost about five thousand a piece. Oh got, my God! Well, got, I won't. I won't be getting implants. Well, you might if the insurance covers it. We'll see. You know, we'll see. I, I, a, a lot of insurance. A lot of insurance co does not cover implants. That's the other right. terrible thing. You know. Right, right. So, I mean, that, what we should do, and I've been yelling about this, I don't know, for the last 50 years, is that we have health insurance, but we don't have dental insurance, you know. Yeah, why is that? We don't have a dental plan, governmental dental plan, to just take care of your, of, of your dental work. I mean, I think right. it's important. I think it's very important. Oh, so do I. You know, you're missing that tooth. It's going to be a little harder for you to get a job missing a tooth. Right? Especially that too. Yeah, and you're an actor, by the way. Let me add, you're an actor. Right, right, you know, right. And uh, unless they want you to play some toothless homeless person, uh, I can be on. I can be on an episode of uh, Discoveries, the Moonshiners. Right, right. I can be a moonshiner. Yeah, but I mean the whole thing about putting in, uh, yeah, boy. 
that's a lot of work. But a, right. I, I'd say go get a second opinion, but I don't know if you get second opinions with Dennis. I think they're all friends with each other. Yeah, yeah. so do I. <laughs> Anyway, hey, listen, you know, uh, I, I, you're the only one I do 25 minutes with. Sometimes I do it with Bubbles, but I do 25 minutes with you because we just talk and we have a good time. And, and right. You know, like I said, we should just call this the conversation. Yeah, I might, yeah, we should start making this into a show of its own. I'll get a right. theme for it and everything else. And we'll, right. You know, we'll do that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the man you're looking at is the lovely and attractive the Stephen Kravitz, who can be seen absolutely nowhere at the present time except in a dentist chair. That's right. Thank you. Thank you so much. My career is skyrocketing. Talking, talking to you next week. All right, my friend. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, my old friend Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. I love talking to him. As you know, I love talking to him. A uh, good time to be had by all. Thank you so much for being here. I'm glad you joined the show tonight. If you listened to the show last night, I don't know why you have any reason to listen to it tonight because it, uh, that was a weird show last night. Oh. Hmm. Or program. I always call it a program. I don't call I don't call anything I do a show. Show tends to cheapen what it is. It's, it also I don't know if I'm putting on a show as much as I'm putting on a program. And I've always done a program. That was always my my thought about it. People say, Oh, the Alex Bennett show. No, it program is what you should call it. And I hate it when these news people over at MSNBC call their stuff a show. Because it's really not, okay? Uh, what are they going to do? Are they going to tap dance for us? Is that coming up on the show? Are you going to do some magic tricks on the show? Are you going to sing for us on the show? You know, it's a newscast. Uh, or ostensibly so. Most of them don't pass for being newscasts, however. Anyway, oh boy, it is, you know, even though I have air conditioning going here full blast, literally full blast, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really hot in here, you know? Uh, so I bet I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, carry on. But the, the, uh, the, um, the actual, what, let's see, what's the temperature right now? 74 degrees, folks. 74 degrees. All right? So um, that's in New York. It was earlier today, 97 degrees, so we've gone down over 20 degrees, about 23, 24 degrees, so, you know. But tomorrow it's supposed to be hot again, you know. And, and all you people in the rest of the country who are sweltering, I'm sure that I'm uh, making you get very mad at me for even bringing this up and saying how terrible it is, but, you know. Oh, we had some lightning here about a couple of hours ago. I mean, just absolutely spectacular. It was like hitting the middle of town as I looked at it. And it was just that crackling. Oh, but it was wonderful. You know, it was like, it was, I think I want to create a monster kind of, kind of weather, you know. Igor, bring me the voltage tabs, you know, one of those things, those things that they used to put in his neck and they're going, Neh. Uh, anyway, boy, it, it, it is, it is kind of hot in here, so please pardon me if I do this occasionally and uh, do this and uh, mop myself off. And I've got the air conditioner on in here, so I don't know what the deal is. What's the deal with this anyway? Anyway, let me see here. Let's go uh, admit all, okay, and uh, get this uh, little puppy going here with the uh, citizen panel and crap like that. Okay, I don't know, whenever I do something earlier in the day, this doesn't go to the gallery view, it changes. So we go to the gallery view, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I do believe here comes our citizen panel. Hello, everybody, how are you this evening? Great. Uh, great? I'm great. You're well, good. Th this half of my body is not, but the other half is okay. What do you mean, what, you say, what, what half of your body isn't? My my pinched nerve is still here, so... Oh, you still yeah. got that pinched nerve. That, that's terrible. 
You know, it, I, I have static door. That was really bad. Yeah. What is what is that? What is that problem? Oh, something is somebody's watching on TV. That's what all that noise was. Anyway, so your uh, your pinched nerve is. Uh, is uh is is still is it as bad as it was or is it getting better i keep thinking it's getting better and then all of a sudden i'll hit that one of those points and i just like <laughs> ouch ouch yeah, so yeah just trying to get through it we're going camping uh in a couple of days so i'm trying to get better so i can act like a kid again for, when are you going when are you going home. camp are you going camping with the kids and stuff yeah, there's like seven families. These guys we've grown up together. Well, mm -hmm. since like 21, since uh, we started hitting the clubs. So, uh, but we all have families now. So it's like the movie Grown Ups. So we're all gonna act like we're you know 21 again and jump off ropes into the water and you know all that stuff. Oh yeah, body. with your pinched nerve. I'll probably yeah. Get crutches by the time I come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're tempting fate with that pinched nerve. Take take care of it. Don't over. Oh yeah. You know. So when are you going away? Uh. Uh, Friday, Friday mm. morning. Mm -hmm. Friday morning, come back uh, Tuesday. Yeah, Monday or Tuesday. So I, uh, uh, you know, I was wondering whether I should do a show on on Friday, uh, because it is the beginning of the of the what do you call it weekend? The, uh, uh, you know, the. If you do, I'll call from there. I'll call from camping. Yeah, but I'm wondering, are you guys all going to be around on Friday? I got be? no life. I'll be here. How about you, John? <laughs> How about you? I'm huh? stuck. Uh, 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 speak up, John. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. I don't have any plans. How about you, uh, 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 Jeff? I'm stuck. You're stuck. And how about you, <laughs> uh, Trucker Steve? Uh, we'll be uh, visiting family, going to Niagara Falls on the weekend. Uh, uh, yeah, but are you doing that Friday? Well, fr Friday's uh, not the 4th of July. Saturday. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll do it. But you'll be, so uh, you'll we'll, be around. We'll Friday. be gone Friday. No, I see. I, I, Sunday's <laughs> the 4th of July, not Friday. I mean, right. Sunday the 4th of July is Monday the 4th of July. <clears throat> okay. no, I think it's Sunday. So they, Sunday. Yeah, but, but, Thursday up here is but, Canada. Day. Oh, it is Sunday. Uh, yeah. yeah, but they're going to make Monday a holiday off, right? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. Uh, it's Fourth of July observed. Well, we'll see. I'll I'll I'll, I'll <clears> let <throat> you know whether we're going to do a show or not on the, on on a Friday. I'm starting to look for excuses not to do a show. You know, <laughs> especially after last night. Jeez, Almighty! Oh, man. What was that? No, all don't about? start. Don't start. Or I'm hanging up, and I'm getting out of here. No, well, I actually today I I did a little research, a little little work. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I, I was in contact with uh, uh, Tony, mm. and he apologized. <laughs> so he is now allowed to come back on the program, and he said he he'll be a good boy, you know, uh, because that was that was really disruptive last night. And then I got a call from uh, Kathleen, good. and she wanted to apologize for her demeanor last night. Because, quite frankly, you know, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Because she was complaining about something that didn't exist. You know, everybody on this program, I mean, yeah, we, we sometimes argue about politics and things back and forth. But basically, we like each other, right? We don't hate each other. There's no oh. enmity going on. Yeah. And, I, um, like a good, I like a good debate. So I couldn't figure out what the whole thing was about. And then her father chiming in. I didn't understand that one either. It was yeah, very was it weird. Was, it was very strange <laughs> to me. But I, I and I'm maybe talking out of school. But it was very nice of you to reach out to her, Charlie. Uh, mm. Char well, you know, I, like I said, I care about her. Yeah, I yeah. Well, I, I cared about her too. That's why I wanted. To, that's why she called today. I was going to call her because I uh, I was going to maybe give it a couple of days to you know. Tamped down, but she called me, and I, you know, I wanted to find out what was going wrong. And it really wasn't. It was about a lot of other things as well in her life, okay? Yeah. Which I think is something we all kind of suspected. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I felt truly really bad for her, but I told her. She says, "Well, may I'll take a little time off," and I said, "Well, fine." I said, "But you know, know that you're always welcome on the show, and if you come on, 
we won't even talk about this. Okay, we'll we'll make this just a, a thing of the past. And I said basically I, I say the same thing to Tony, as long as he apologized and as long <coughs> as we've settled it, uh, he's welcome back here anytime and we'll we won't we won't bring it up. You know. Yes. So let's stop talking about it. <laughs> what well, it, it bothered you, didn't it? Uh, no. Actually, you know what, what about last night was mm -hmm. Josh. Josh's talk about about the Democrats and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was really wrong to talk about that, and I didn't want to start hashing up that part of last night. But yeah, you know, I thought about that. Yeah, and you you have uh, you know you have Trump coming out here now, and Trump's visiting the wall, mm -hmm. and he's trying to get you know Texas is gonna take some money and pay for the rest of the wall to be done and all this stuff. You know, this is like prime bait for that shark. You know. He's just he's ready to pounce on Biden. And and Josh is right, man. You know, Biden's got to start doing some stuff, you know, and and get some stuff done. Or Trump's just going to be there and say, look, I told you this isn't happening. This isn't happening. And like you guys are saying about the Democrats, he's just going to eat them up. So well, he's going to be pulling that shit anyway. You know, no matter what happens, he's just going to lie, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but but I kind of agreed with Josh in a lot of ways. You know that mm -hmm. that the 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 Democrats are kind of pussies, and yep. they don't really stand up for themselves like they should. I mean, exactly. I'm not asking us to be as uh, ugly as the Republicans in our demeanor, but I think we could certainly put our foot down and say, no, this we're now we now have the power. You got to follow us, motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, and and I, but I thought it was you know it was a great little thing that Josh was bringing up, and um, then all of a sudden all this hell broke loose that just took us away from that, you mm -hmm. know. And I I I didn't understand it at all. I just heard her shouting to somebody. And I said, "What's the problem?" And then she started in and crying and everything. And I think she just had she was having emotional problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I respect that, and uh, I, I hope that we'll see her back here, and she'll be the happy, fun person that she normally is. <clears throat> yes, Charlie. One of the things that Josh brought up is he, he was saying he's getting so frustrated with the Democrats that he might, he's starting to think he might vote Republican. And I just wanted to respond to that because, you know, there's a thing called cutting off your nose to spite your face. Well, I think <laughs> he was making a joke with that yeah, I, I, yeah. I I know Josh pretty well and I think he would probably cut off his arm before he'd become a Republican you know or vote for a Republican but I always remember back in when I was a kid in 1961 and 1962 and 1963 the Chicago White Sox finished second to the New York Yankees every year and all the fans in Chicago got so mad they kept saying fire the manager get rid of Eddie Stanky so they fired Eddie Stanky after the 63 season. Yeah. White Sox finished last in 64. <laughs> so you, you do want to make a change, but you got to make the right change. Yeah. You can't make, you can't make a change that's going to make things worse. Yeah, well, but, yeah, what I think it, is, I think yeah. he was talking as a Democrat saying, you know, if they don't start getting tougher, you know, we're going to, we're going to start losing everything. We, you know, we have the power right now. And we should do something. We should flex our muscle. But no, he wants to get along with the Republicans. Well, I got news for Biden. The Republicans don't want to get along with him. No, it takes two mm -hmm. you know, to, to negotiate, and they aren't going to negotiate. You know, and it's admirable that, you know, that, that Biden wants some cooperation, and I don't mind him making the attempt, but they haven't, they haven't cooperated with that, so fuck them. Let's do everything we can possibly do, short of uh, uh, something illegal, to get our way. You know, but, uh, but, and I thought it was a very interesting discussion, but then it all kind of went to hell because, you know, we had other problems here. Don't you know. discuss it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, like Jeff was also saying, you know, big projects, they come in phases, you know, and, yeah. Yeah, and when you guys were talking, you know, talking about you're saying too much and keep adding so much on these bills that then it gives something for Republicans to say no. If you can do these small <laughs> bills, maybe maybe something would work out easier and get them done quicker. Now, but today was a big day for news. Uh, a lot of news <laughs> is breaking every hour. 
practically. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, a very simple one, uh, the death of Donald Rumsfeld. How many here are saddened oh. over that? Yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It made uh, my weekend. Well, no, I'm just, uh, I just, uh, I don't know. You, oh, Donald lying. Rumsfeld is yeah. dead? Yeah. Oh. I'm really pissed off that he's, that he didn't die so quicker. I mean, slowly, slowly. We, how did he, how did he die? Does anybody know? I guess he just, yeah. he was 88. You don't ask how did he die. Mm. He just died, right? You know. <clears throat> which makes me feel real good about my prospects. Anyway. Um, hey, Clint Eastwood's got a new movie coming out. He's 90. Is he yeah. acting in it? Huh? Yeah, he's starring in it. Well, uh, what, what do you call uh -huh. Woody Allen is uh, 86 now and still making movies. Yeah. But I don't know if you saw his last one, but he looks like it was made by an 86-year-old director. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> it's not. <laughs> why? Why? Why do you say that? It's just not very good. Yeah. Okay, it's just not very good. Uh, I wish I could say it was really good. I wish <laughs> I could say, "Hey, it's wonderful." You know, he's still. But you know, it just and also he's got a problem because he has a problem getting financing now, and he has a problem getting a cast in it. I mean, you know. Mia Farrow wasn't available? No, Mia Farrow <laughs> wasn't available. But, I mean, it was, uh, it was, not, a, uh, it was not a great movie. Uh, and Bill it, Cosby's available now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, we were oh, go I was going to bring... And I, Mia Farrow in the interracial couple movie. That'd be awesome. I was about to... In New York. I was about to bring that up. Be an adventure. I, yes, yes. Uh, the uh, Bill Cosby was released from prison today by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, who said that he was the the um, uh, the trial was illegal. That what, what happened to him was illegal because he had made a deal early on in the civil action with the district attorney of the state district attorney that uh, he would plead guilty in the civil court and, and admit to certain things in the civil court if they promised not to prosecute him in a criminal court. So they said, fine, and that was the deal they made. Then, all of a sudden, they get a new state attorney general in, and he decides to prosecute him on criminal charges. But the deal had already been made, and so they used as evidence against him in the criminal trial, the testimony he gave in the civil trial. And uh, the Supreme Court of the state of Pennsylvania said, uh-uh, you can't do that. That's wrong. And I agree with them. I think that that, that was a, a just verdict on their part. And they added, he cannot be tried again. Okay, because they tried him. This was the second trial, if you may remember. Right. So they tried him again. So really, that's what it's all about. You know, and I, I go on to MSNBC, and these people are going, oh, he's getting away with it, blah, blah, blah. No, he's not huh? getting away with anything. You know, you guys doing chores? he might have turned out, he might have, it might have turned out better for him in his uh, criminal case if he hadn't already testified in his, yeah. you know, in his uh, civil case. So that's what happened with uh, anybody have any feelings about the the Cosby verdict today? Well, I understand the ruling. Yeah. He's still he I still think he's guilty though. I mean, <laughs> he did rape those women. Yeah. Well, he got off on a technicality. Yeah. What I was saying happens to, all the time. What I was saying to Marjorie today is maybe, maybe, maybe we couldn't call it rape. I mean, maybe he was just being nice. He, I said to, I said, Marjorie, if some guy offered you drugs and then wanted to have sex with you, would you say okay? And she said, probably in the old days I would have. And I said, then what's the difference between that and what Bill Cosby did? Because <laughs> he didn't ask them. <laughs> no, yeah. he didn't even ask them. Yeah, well, you know. They didn't know they were taking drugs. You know, I got to tell you something. Allegedly. Uh, I, 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 you know, I really, uh, maybe this is, uh, maybe I sound like a conservative when I start saying this kind of thing. But that you're a, an adult 
you know, you're a woman who uh, uh, has certain control over her own life. You've heard, it, there wasn't a person in the world didn't know Bill Cosby who was up to this kind of thing. I mean, this was always the, 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 the thing that people said about him. And, uh, and then you're surprised, you know, then you go up to his room, it was like Harvey Weinstein, okay? absolute asshole, terrible person, using his power to get him. But how many of those women went up to those uh, up to his room knowing what was going to happen because he had the reputation? I knew about Harvey Weinstein, and I'm not a woman. I don't live in Hollywood, and I'm not looking for a job in a movie. And I knew what he was up to because it was all over the industry. And you're going to tell me that you're suddenly, oh my God, I, they did this to me, did that. You didn't have to go up to Harvey Weinstein's room. Why did you go up there? Because you thought you might get a job. But you knew full well what you were getting yourself into. And if you didn't, you were really naive. In the case of Bill Cosby, especially in the early days when he was drugging these women, they didn't know that stuff was being put in their drinks and whatever and what he was up to. But I never could understand that kind of behavior anyway. Who wants to have sex with somebody who's absolutely comatose? Me? <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense. That's not fun. You know, but anyway. Uh, I think you better go sit over there. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, we, we can talk it in general terms. No, she, she, just, she just walked up. Say hello. <laughs> Boy, Hi. She, you know something? She's she's growing up, you know. Are you growing up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> From, <laughs> yeah, with, with her phone in her hand as a five-year-old. Boy, a five-year-old with a, is that her own phone? It's just to play games. It's my old phone, just to play games. It's your old phone, just to and play and watch games. like watch YouTube. So she does her dancing off of that. Okay, can can you go down there? Does she? We're talking adult talk. Yeah, it's There's a lot it's, of bad words. It's Adult Swim. Hi. No. <laughs> oh, no. Hold on, let me discipline. I'm ruling this chair. Okay. Okay. Well, everybody, you just be careful with how you say what you're saying. You know. Uh, <laughs> yes, so Charlie. I, I, uh, I still have a problem with blaming the victim. I mean, somebody could say, "Well, you knew when you left your car unlocked that somebody could steal it." So how are we gonna how are we gonna try somebody for stealing your car? No, no. Well, I think you're talking about two different things here. What I'm saying <laughs> is, is there when it came to Harvey Weinstein? Okay, forget Bill Cosby because what he did when in the early days he was doing this, and those you know the the word wasn't out about him. Oh, well, I think that later on it was, but not then. Uh, but in the case of Harvey Weinstein. Everybody knew what this guy was up to. Everybody knew what the game he was playing. So, you know, any woman who, who involved herself with him was taking a chance because she thought she might get some kind of work out of him. And uh, I just don't know that that was really, uh, I'm not going to say we don't hold Weinstein responsible, but we're saying when it happens to somebody, we got to go, didn't you hear about him? Did, what didn't didn't somebody? I'm sure for every woman that went up to Harvey Weinstein's uh, hotel room or whatever, there was some girlfriend saying, "Well, you know about Harvey, don't you?" You know, I mean, it, it was that. Uh, what was it? I think Shecky said to me. He said, "Look, everybody in the business knew what Harvey Weinstein was up to. So these women didn't." You know, and I'm not saying that that uh, even under those conditions, what he did was right. He was a right. slime bag. But <clears throat> please don't say, oh, those poor women, because a lot of them knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. You know, and they're complaining yeah. after the fact. And what bothered... Well, and the other <laughs> fact is that they were complaining years and years after the fact. Yes, you know, if it was that big of an issue, it should have been reported right away. If right? you are raped, you know, I, you know, there is this argument that women 
never went around saying they were raped because nobody would believe them or nobody would do anything about it. Yeah. And right. so they just kind of kept quiet. I'll buy that to a certain extent, but I think yeah. that there was a time that that, that that wasn't true any longer, and they should have complained, and they should have gone to the cops about it, you know? Uh, I mean, uh, why, why didn't these women with Bill Cosby go to the cops and, and, and turn him in? I, did, any, did any of them try to turn him in at the time that the he actor... He was a very po powerful man in, in Hollywood. Well, that would ruin their career. Well, I'm I'm questioning whether uh, uh, he had, you know, that Cosby had that kind of power. You know, I mean, I Weinstein did absolutely. You know, Weinstein could win you an Academy Award, okay? And what he would do is he would not only win you an Academy Award, he <clears> would <throat> buy you that Academy Award. He would take out all the ads in the trades. He would and do he, all the. He could also. He could also destroy your career too. Oh, yeah, absolutely, a absolutely. Yeah. But, huh? but I think the thing about Cosby was that he was like the most loved man in oh, yeah. in all the, the Cosby Show. I mean, he, even white people yeah. were watching that show. I mean, he wow. was so popular with all the things going on. I, I remember when he was a comedian when I was growing up in the '60s and the early '70s. He was like, um, he was like the most popular black man in the world. You know, I mean, he was. Like the like the only black guy besides Sammy Davis Jr. that the white people could kind of. Okay. You know, I was a white okay. kid and I used to listen to his albums sitting yeah. on the curb out in the street. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have twenty of Bill Cosby's albums, his LP, yeah. right here. Yeah, he was. I bought every me. fucking LP he ever released. Yeah, okay. Let me let here. me let me let me bring up something that Dave Chappelle brought up. And uh, what he said in an interview, or either that or his comedy act, is he said, let me defend Bill Cosby for a moment. You know, forgetting all the things that, he, that he's accused of doing, let's look at some of the things that he also did. Like all the money he contributed to college uh, scholarship funds for black kids. Yeah. And all the programs that he invested in and the money he spent to help black youth he said, you know, that was pretty admirable of the guy. He said he was in there before anybody else was doing this sort of thing. And as an educator, because he had his degree in education, he did everything he could to educate them, paid for, you know, for, for colleges and universities for them, had scholarship funds. He said, so now the question is, do we throw all that good out because there's this bad? Or do we say maybe that's the price we have to pay for him doing all that good? I, you know, he he just said, you know, well, let's not forget all the good things that Bill Cosby did, which are not small. There are many. No, it's huge. Well, you know, he's a love dog. Well, yeah. it, it, again, you know, you're going to another I'm subject. <laughs> I'm just saying, everybody, no matter how horrible they are, has done something good somewhere in their life. Name, that does not mean you forgive all the horrible things they did. Yeah, and so, is that because of guilt, or is that to cover up what he did bad? Yeah, I, I don't think it was for guilt. I think that he really believed in helping the black community. I think he was really into that. You know, it Could wasn't. Very well be. It wasn't a cover. It wasn't. I feel guilty about you know raping all these women. I think I'll give to a kid a scholarship. You know, I don't think that was in his mind. I think he just had them compartmentalized. Um, well, that's true, you know. But when you say the good with the bad, Hitler, blah, 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 the fact is, name something good Hitler did. You know. Trains always I mean, ran on let, let, uh, Let's look on the plus side. <laughs> let's look on the... You asked me. Uh, 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 let's look on the plus side of Hitler. I think he once said... Autobahn. The Autobahn. The Autobahn yeah, yeah. was made for the tanks, right? How about, and now, yeah. so they, they, where they, you can drive at any miles an hour. That's how, awesome. The greatest how, highway how, in the world. How about, exactly. how about the Volkswagen? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get fired off of this show. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, just, I was crushed. I, I practically worshipped Bill Cosby. I saw him when I was a student at Northwestern, and he came. I was sitting on the front row. Mm. I okay. got to shake his okay. hand. That, that then brings up the other subject that you that you I was crushed 
That brings up mm. the other subject yeah. in this whole thing, okay? And that is, uh, do we throw out the baby, the bath, uh, baby with the bathwater? In other words, uh, great comic, did oh, great yeah. monologues. I thought in his day, terrific. Okay, it's clean, still right? Fun. right? It was so clean. Yeah. yeah. Do we suddenly not listen to his comedy anymore, or do we suddenly? negate his artistic achievement because of his personal faux pas mm. faux pas that's putting it mildly his mm. his personal foibles i mean where what, what do we do i mean do we suddenly if we find an author was a rapist but he wrote great mm. books do we suddenly burn the books because the guy's a rapist i mean there there's always a duality in people's lives that way and and so what do we do? I mean, yeah. you you still have Cosby's albums there, I right? I can't throw it away. They're funny. Do you still listen to them? I haven't listened to them about twenty years, but <laughs> okay. I, I, I listened to them after I heard about Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I I just don't know that that he was that. Uh, you know that you you that you have to that you can't take the man in totality. And yes, what he did to these women was absolutely horrific. It was horrific. Uh, and and uh, I have absolutely no, no argument with that. But still, there's this other part of him. And Chappelle brought that up and he said, you know, how much do we, how much do we take of the good when we know the bad exists? Mm -hmm. You know, and if we're happy with all the good that he did, <clears throat> Then we have to, yeah. It's a very strange thing to what yeah. kind of determination are you going to come to? Yes, uh, John. I saw this uh, this meme on um, Twitter. And it was a picture of uh, from the '70s: Howard Cosell, O.J. Simpson, mm -hmm. Bruce Jenner, mm -hmm. and it said, "Hello, this is Howard Cosell, and you're not going to believe this." <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like he's from the future. Hi, hi to Tiffany, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing, Tiffany? I'm doing good, doing good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Your ha husband's hanging out with his pals. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, yes. uh, you know, I mean, so I mean, we, 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 it's really a big question we have to constantly ask ourselves. I mean, if somebody was a great, you know, great musician, let's say. A massive artist and all of a sudden one day you find out he's doing what Bill Cosby did do you suddenly say his music isn't any good anymore no no you can't do that you know. yeah you start going to the Michael Jackson you start going yeah. to yeah R. Kelly I mean who where does it stop right Really? Well, I never thought Mark Kelly was any good, so I don't care. Right. But there's a generation that that listened to him and liked him. But yeah. with Michael Jackson, you did you did yeah. negate his ability as a no, performer no, and as a musician. Everybody still listens to Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And by the way, nobody ever proved the allegations about Michael Jackson. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, well, it's pretty. Well, you know, you can't do that, John. When, well, some, when, when they are not able to prove it in a court of law, then you have to, as a good American, assume his innocence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, but, it, I mean, if, if, you know, all those all those people that came out and, you know, and corroborated it in that, you know, in that, that documentary. Well, you no, know, but that was after the fact. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and, that, and, and gonna, believe it or not, that was a hit piece on him, just like... Did anybody see the yeah. Woody Allen documentary? Woody Allen, yeah. What a yeah. hit piece that was. Yeah. You know, I don't, quite frankly, I don't think Woody Allen ever did anything to his daughter. I just don't believe it. Uh, I think uh, what she's dealing, the girl's dealing, I think the girl believes it. I think she, her, Mia was crazy enough to train her that way yeah, brainwash. and to brainwash her that way. But I think what it's done to the life work of a very good, uh, good writer, director, comedian, is horrible because it, yeah. it's proof when you watch this latest movie. He didn't have the budget to do it the way he <coughs> wanted to do it. He didn't wasn't able to get the actors he wanted to have in it. Okay. Uh, so I mean, the the question is, 
what, what have we done here? You know, and, and, and no one has ever proved that Woody Allen's guilty of anything. Okay, it's all innuendo, and it's all, well, I saw the documentary on, uh, on, on a HBO Max. Yeah, you saw the documentary. You saw a hit piece by some people who had already in the past tried to do hit pieces on him. Yeah. You know, and shame on HBO for even <coughs> buying that thing, knowing who was putting the thing together. And, and I just, and, and, hmm? I know, I just, sorry to interrupt. I was just gonna say, and that, then you go back again to this whole thing. Why so long? Why is this coming out now, you know? Yeah, almost 30 years later. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've had 30 years to deal with this. This has been smoldering for that long, you know, and at the time that it was accused, he was found, uh, nothing went on, you know, and as long as that's the case, then let the guy make his movies, you know, quit disassociating yourself with him, you know, and all the actors and actresses who worked with him said, well, I'll never work with him again. He gave you a great part, yeah. and and you were in that movie, and you know, I mean, uh, I I don't think what's her name. Um, I'm trying to remember the actress's name. It was in Blue Blue Jasmine. Uh, oh yeah. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think she has said anything about it, yeah. but I mean, yeah. she won an Academy Award courtesy of him. You know. Yeah. What's her name? Yeah, I I, I I would I know it in a second, but I'm, you know, yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'll tell you one that that still stands by me, Scarlett Johansson. Yes, she does. Yeah, she does. Uh, uh, and and uh, you know, I mean, but I'm I'm trying to think what what is that actress's name? It starts with a C, I think her last name, if I remember correctly. Um, oh God, uh, well. Uh, she was in the Indiana Jones movie. Uh, Karen Allen? No. No, no, no. No, no it was um, uh, 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 not Gwyneth Paltrow, but... Oh, uh, Capshaw! Cap, no, no, no. no that, well, you said C. Hold on a second. I'm going to <laughs> IMDB and Blue Jasmine, and I'll <clears> have <throat> it for you in a second. I never saw Blue Jasmine. Oh, it's a good picture. I was filmed in San Francisco. As a matter of fact, oh, really? you know who else is in that picture? Is very good, and it is uh, um, the comedian guy. Uh, uh, he's saying, uh, "What's <laughs> oh, my mind's just uh, just Google it, man. Yeah, I, 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 Google it. I have it Kate here. Blanchett. Clay, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Okay. And, and the comedian oh. was um, the uh, who was Andrew uh, Dice Alex Clay. Baldwin. Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew, yeah, Andrew Dice, Dice Clay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you he know. He was good in that movie. Oh, he's Doctor terrific. Street. No, listen, Andrew Dice Clay is a very good actor. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a shame that he went and did that whole comedy thing because it's so sucked. Yeah. It <clears throat> so sucked. Was you he know? an actor before he did the comedy thing? Yes. The Thunderbird. What was the... Um, he, did, uh, he did... He did... Ford Thunderbird? And also, there was a show done by the, by the guy who did... Um, uh, Miami Vice, and it was a follow-up to Miami Vice, I think called Crime Wave or something like that. Hmm. And it was about gangsters, and he was played a gangster, and it was terrific. Hmm. Uh, you know, but uh, it, it's just that uh, these are people who he's given great parts to, and so on, and now they're going, well, I won't ever work with him. because What they're afraid of is people will think wrong of them if they work with him. Yeah. And why you just don't take a stance that, hey, I don't think he's guilty of anything, and I find nothing wrong with working with him, and besides, he's never been convicted of anything. Mm -hmm. He's just had some hit pieces done against him. So mm -hmm. until you can supply me with the proof that he was guilty of all these things, I am absolutely not going to have anything <clears throat> to, you know, to do. I'm not going to have anything to do with this, this thing that's going on against Woody. I want to see him still be able to make movies as long as he can continue to make movies. And I, anything that impedes on that is a shame. It's a crime. And especially in this case, because in all the Me Too stuff, yeah, some people were guilty of it. Yes, uh, Louis C.K., who I think should be forgiven by now, did pull his penis out, you know, in front of a bunch of women. He admitted to it. But he can't, he just can't work anymore. 
He can't get television. He can't make movies. He can't make television shows. He was one of the major producers in television before this happened. Mm -hmm. Loved his TV show. He had shows on, but yeah. also the shows he created. You know, I mean, uh, he was terrific. And all of a sudden, his career's out the window. And, and my question is, why? You know? Here's what he was accused of, folks, in case you don't remember. He was accused of there were a bunch of female comedians who he was hanging out with in a hotel room. And at one point he said, you don't mind if I pull my penis out, do you? <laughs> and nobody he said must... no. So he pulled his penis out. He must have been fucked up. No, he was known he didn't for... didn't do anything with it. He he's just pulled it out. He, yeah, he's known for doing that. And I might say... Uh, he was a decent human being about it. He asked first. You know? Well, now you compare this to uh, oh, what J Kevin Spacey was accused of and what Weinstein was accused of and even what Cosby was accused of, and you kind of trivialize those by saying yeah. that, that Louis C.K. is guilty of some horrible crime and not allowing him to work anymore. I find that ridiculous. Yeah. And, and part of the problem was he was one of the first guys that was outed. Okay, yeah. so he was in that, oh, let's all rush to get these guys time. A couple of months later, about a, six months later, Ryan Seacrest was accused and he just walked off free because of the whole heaviness about it had, had changed. You know, He just yeah. said, no, I didn't, and that was it. Uh, and, huh? There was so so I was <clears throat> I wanted to bring this up a while back, but you know Tom Seaver and <clears throat> maybe Charlie knows this one. Tra Tom Seaver just got in trouble for commenting on one of the players' do rags, <clears throat> and and Tom um, Seaver he had to apologize right away and all this stuff and well Tom, and, Tom Seaver's dead. Tom Seaver that? died. He's oh, not Tom Seaver. Who who is that? The one of one of these guys doing the sports casting. Oh yeah, I, I, I heard about um, that. I forget his name. He was a used to be the manager of the Diamond. Oh, he played yeah, for the so Giant. He, it's um. He said, uh, he played for the Giant. Bill oh, Bremley, Bremley, Bob Bill Bremley. Bremley. Yeah, yeah. Bob Bremley. He mentioned someone's do rag and said some comments on it, and this is like the second time on Survivor, the show Survivor. The guy mentioned a do rag before, and it was it was like a big big deal, and and I don't understand what the big deal is. But <laughs> I know it was funny. He said, "I think he's wearing Tom Seaver's do rag." <laughs> yeah, do rag. So, Charlie, is there is there something a, a racist or, or or commenting about a do rag? All my friends had do rags when we were playing basketball, and we all called them do rags. And I'm, yeah, we I, all called them do rags. We never. Yeah. It wasn't a derogatory well, so thing. So what was, what was, what was, what was they, they said the do-rag was what was wrong? Calling it a yeah. do-rag? The, the pitcher had a do-rag on, and the commentator said, I think he's wearing Tom Seaver's do-rag. Yeah, he's... Tom Seaver pitched was, back in the 60s. And he wore a pitch with a do-rag. No, he was a white guy who would never mm -hmm. wear a do-rag. It was just, right. you know, being ironic. Well, uh, but what they were mad about is that he used the term do-rag? That's a term that's been it, around for... That's what it's called. No, yeah, because, no, on Survivor, being, they did the same thing. He was like belittling the guy wearing a do rag, like making fun of it. Mm. Well, that's what they thought, you know. You know, I mean, but they were making a joke I, about I, it. I think we're getting a little too sensitive these days. Yeah, we're really. looking for every reason we can to say, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, and yeah. now you're yeah. now because you did it, you're going to have to suffer for it. You know, come on. You know, let's yeah, friendly, say ha friendly had to apologize right away, and, and I say, man, here we go with the apologies again. You know, they they don't justify why they said it or something. It's apologize, apologize. I'll tell you something. It's interesting. I was watching uh, Bill Maher with uh, Quentin Tarantino this weekend, mm. and uh, Maher brought something up. He said, "What I've always appreciated about you, Quentin, is when you're caught in the middle of these things, you never apologize." You just stand your ground and say, so what? Kiss my ass. You know? Uh, and he said, I appreciate that because, because I'm so sick of all these people saying, oh, I humbly apologize if I offended anybody. You know? I mean, I just think oh, we're just got, we've just gotten a little too sensitive about everything. <laughs> you know? And I, I, don't, I, I don't understand it. You know? I mean, 
Uh, I, w w where's our sense of humor, too? I mean, let me, let me take you back to vaudeville. Boy, am I yeah. talking about the old times. This, I wasn't alive at the time of vaudeville, folks. So, What is vaudeville? Can you explain? Well, vaudeville was the theater of the, <laughs> of the 20s and 30s and aughts and the 10s, you know. People would go to a theater. There'd be something like eight, ten acts, variety show, much like America's Got Talent. And then these TV. guys, and then you would get uh, really a wonderful, uh, for like, you know, 25 cents or whatever, a great bunch of entertainment. And there would always be the, the leading act, so there was a big star who would have the, 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 that was number one on the bill. But what was the, what was the specialty of vaudeville? It was what they called dialect humor. Uh, there mm -hmm. were the Jewish acts, the Italian acts. There were the, mm -hmm. you know, it was all these, all these guys with dialects doing comedy. And that was looked at as fine. If you did that today, you'd be hung up on, an, on a lamppost somewhere for doing it. We've lost all sense of, of making fun of ourselves. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yep. Um, You're, uh, um, What's his name? The guy that does late night, James Co Coden? Corden. Corden, yeah. yeah. He does that thing where they, they you know, yes. either spill your beans. Yeah, or get this one. Like ethnic yeah. food, you know? Well, what, no, what it was, it, it, something about it, here, what happens is you have to reveal something about yourself that you've been asked, but if you can't, then you have to eat the thing they put in front of you. Yeah. Okay? And it's, and it's some disgusting food. All right? Yeah, but, but it's food, food that really exists. Yeah, yeah. And the, like, the argument food, came food, from the or... argument came from the Asian community yeah. that he was making fun of Asian food because a lot of these things were Asian, and let's face it, they eat dogs, don't they? No. <laughs> yes, I saw. You know, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, wh why do you think we have COVID? Some people ate some bats, you know. Um, uh, it, it, in China, uh, I mean, yes, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but God, you know, have, find something else to complain about, you know, because what you're doing is, again, I said earlier, you're trivializing all the other stuff, all the stuff that we really should be worrying about. <clears throat> and I saw an interview with uh, Corden after he did that, and... Uh, uh, I actually think, I think it might have been Howard, I don't remember, but he asked him about that, and he said, you know, are you going to stop doing that? And he says, no, but what are you going to do? He says, I'm just going to say I'm sorry and move on. If that's how you feel, I'm sorry, and I'm just going to move on. It's kind of like Tarantino. He says, we were doing it as a spit, and I'm just going to keep doing it as a bit, and that's it. Yeah, maybe we'll find some other places to get food from, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what he said. He says, I'll... It with Jewish food, well, whatever. I, I have to admit that you know I've been to I was I went to China and uh, a, a lot of Chinese food is very edible over there, but some of it is positively for Westerners inedible. Yeah. So if you're going to get foods that are kind of difficult to eat for Westerners, you're going to take Asian food, right? Yeah. Bal Balut is a 15-day-old egg, and. Yeah. Before this is a long time ago, when I first saw one, my my uh, Chinese worker he dared us to eat one. So one of my white guy friends he went and bit, and you could actually see the beak in the in there. Yeah. You still see oh that. god. The neighbor across oh the street. Oh my god. T Tiffany gets it, and I can't even smell it. It's so bad. <laughs> what, what do you mean Tiffany gets it? She, she gets balut every once in a while. They get all the eggs and they 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 hit the top and then they pop it up and then they they suck the juice. Oh my gosh, so bad! She, like she's from yeah. Vietnam, right? Yeah, of so course. That's, yeah, yeah. Believe so it or not, that's comfort food. Oh yeah, yeah. you know Definitely. my mother. Yeah, they get it every once in a while. Well, uh, people get upset, get disgusted when I say I love tripe, which is mm. the inner uh, cow, yeah, cow innards, cow's yeah, innards. Wow. And the reason I love tripe is because my mother made it, <laughs> and it's comfort food for me. You know, well, I, I eat it and I go yummy. Yeah, but other and people my, can't. My uh, my. Uh, German mother-in-law loves head cheese, and uh -uh. my father used to like blood sausage. Oh yeah, yeah that too. Yeah, and, I I'm, and I'm and I'm telling you, there was nothing more than disgusting than on a Sunday yeah. morning watching my father 
Why do they call eat, it eat, eat, eat cheese blood when it's old? sausage? Which, by the way, as you eat it, it, the blood kind of is there. Okay. Yeah. And he would uh, down it with buttermilk, uh, so he would have a ring of like blood sausage uh, around his mouth. Oh my god! Uh, that was something I couldn't get into. But I are uh, you trying to get everybody a little sick? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, a good job. I, my mother used to make tongue. I love tongue. You know. Well, you you mm -hmm. know, most Jews kind of like tongue. We go to delicatessens yeah. and they serve tongue. Lingua. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, I know my father wouldn't uh, eat a lobster. That was mm. terrible. Well, that's trafe if you're if you're kosher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. If you're kosher, you can't eat that. Mm. Uh, but uh, for me, a but lobster. I don't think he did it for the limit of kosher stuff. Yeah. Just too Marjorie can't eat lobster. It makes her, it's too it go. It's too hard for her to digest for some reason. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I said to her, you know, lob in fact, once I took her out to dinner and I surprised her by taking her to her lobster house. And she said, I can't eat lobster. I said, well, I'm sure they have something else here, but, you know. I, uh, to me, lobster is like this wonderful thing. But anyway, there's one other story. It's out there tonight, percolating, will become very big tomorrow. It's, it's official tomorrow. Weitzelberg, the lawyer yeah. for Trump, mm. is going to be charged by the, the district uh, the attorney, I guess, of the Southern District Court of blah, 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 and also the Trump Organization yeah. for not paying taxes and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so this is the beginning of it. Well, the yeah. question is, will Weitzelberg turn tail on the boss Mm. You know, who's never been loyal to anybody in his life, oh. and Weitzelberg more than anybody should know that. You know, uh, is he gonna is he going to be doing the you know the deal? You know, is he gonna is he gonna tell on the boss? So we have to we have to. How many here are very happy to hear that news? I I figured I as am. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Hmm. About time they start getting after that guy. Well, the other yeah. the other day, uh, um, uh, Phil said to me, uh, you know, well, it looks like Trump is not going to be charged by the, you know, the yeah. DA in, in the Southern District. And I went, that's not the story. The story is they never were going after Trump. Okay, they were going after the corporation, and if they do this to the Trump organization, they could prevent them from doing business anywhere, you know? And the, according to the DA, there is, a, there is a thing afoot to charge Trump, but not right now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know? It's um, like when they got Enron, you know, they, they started off with Enron's accounting firm, and they yeah. ended up throwing the guy in jail that ran the thing. Yeah, you know? exactly. So. so. You know, I mean, it, it can't be that, uh, that uh, unless Trump is the stupidest guy in the world, that he's sleeping well tonight, you know, yeah. with all this going down. And, and the question mm. is, why, uh, uh, yes, uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. I, yeah, I'm, I'm always curious as to what, which way this might go. Mm -hmm. And just imagine that this guy who's his accountant financial guy finds out that uh, he changed the taxes mm -hmm. and so that they got they didn't pay a million dollars worth of taxes I'm making that number up but that means that that Trump and his family have to pay for that right yeah, yeah. Uh, pay for maybe what? that million dollars is ten million dollars Maybe it's well. It has to. Uh, it, 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 if he, if they're charging the corporation, it's got to come from the corporation. And I don't think the corporation has that kind of money. I I think I think uh, I think Trump's you lucky know, to. But, huh? Yeah. You know, when, when when it gets into that kind of money, you can't just say, "Oh, we made a mistake. We didn't know." When yeah. when you when you're skating on that kind of tax, yeah. they're not going to let you say, "Oh, I just didn't know." They're going to go after you criminally. 
You know, they're not going to just go, oh, just pay it back in a penalty. No, you, you, that, that, and another thing I think, uh, who might be on the hook is Mer- Melania and, uh, Ivanka yeah. because the, uh, remember the big party they did the, the inauguration party yeah. and they raised all that money. There was yeah. like a, like a million and a half bucks that just is missing. You know, they don't know where it is. And, and, you know, yeah, and, and, probably why they're distancing themselves from him. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, let's face it. Um, uh, I think that the Trump organization is probably on the edge of bankruptcy. And it always has been, you yeah. know. And uh, I, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I wouldn't be too surprised if, in the next two to four to five years, uh, we see Trump Tower get sold. You know, yeah. because they have they need the money. Look yeah. who's in back of you there, Brian. Trying to get your no. attention. Mm-hmm. She was practicing to... dancing. She's practicing right now. Now she's trying to hide. See, mm. uh, yeah. uh, now she's trying to perform. Is what she's trying to do. You know, yeah, I didn't realize, that... but Alan hasn't called all night. Hello, Alan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I was no in, rehashing yeah. of last night. We have a rule tonight. No, no, no. Fine. That's why I waited. No, I'm kidding. I, I was in dinner. <laughs> God, thank God, thank yeah. We don't need to go over that again. So That's where true. were you tonight? At, at dinner. Oh, we all had dinner. What's your excuse? Yeah, I had dinner. Yeah, I'm doing a Brian, show I'll here. I bet you don't go to bed at four in the morning like me. This is dinner time, <laughs> lunch time for me. <laughs> I'm waking up at that time. I know. I figured you go to bed at four in the morning. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm retired. I don't have to work. I go to bed at two in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Brian gets up at four in the morning. He's a working stiff. He's got a family to support, you know? I have a, yes. <laughs> well, by the way, by the way, Brian, just for grins, why have you made the rule that we don't talk about last night's show? <laughs> oh, I was just joking. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not going to bring it up. So You know, if anybody had to forget it, it was me. You know, I mean, I. I... And, you know, when Tony said, Fuck you! I was I was out here watching on the on my phone. So every time I'm gone, you guys just don't know how to act without me. You know something? I think that you, I think that's the case, Brian. You got to be on the show more often. I think yeah, you're absolutely you're correct, that. Brian. That's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah. We behave ourselves when you're around because we, we don't we don't want to. That's because your daughter might sneak in at any point. We don't want to look like fools. <laughs> yeah, right. Raise your wrath, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think that it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what happens here with the whole Trump yeah. deal. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> they're not going after him personally, are they? What was it? Shecky said that he was somewhere or something, and he heard some people talking at a dinner table, and one guy is going, "Well, I'm really happy," and another guy said, "Well, why are you happy?" He said, "Well, because we're getting close to August, and Trump's going to be president again." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are people who are actually waiting for that to happen, and you're going, are you out of your goddamn mind? I mean, do you really believe there's any way? And they say, oh, no, you know what's going to happen? It's because anybody can become the Speaker of the House. You don't have to be a congressman to be Speaker of the House. And so they're going to make him Speaker of the House, and then he's going to be third in line for the presidency. Well, why would the Democrats make him Speaker? No, uh, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, these are just these nutty people out there who won't give up, won't well, give the ghost up on. Uh, if, if the uh, if the Republicans did, you know, take over the House, theoretically, they could put him as the Speaker. Yeah, you but know, that wouldn't be until twenty twenty three. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, yeah I didn't realize true. you don't have to be a congressman to be Speaker of the House. Yeah. You know. Maybe I actually got on the. Sh- I actually got on the show just so I could hear Alex play the tune. Play the theme. Hey, that was cool. I'm glad you got here, you know. It wouldn't Sorry. have been the same without you. Uh, hey, thanks, uh, Jeff, and thanks to Trucker Steve. Always nice to have you here. Uh, nice to have you here, Brian. Nice to have you here, Charlie. Oh, great to have you here, John Larkin. And, of course, I uh, always like uh, uh, our good friend Kevin. And, of course... Uh, well, I won't even mention him because he didn't. Johnny, he come wasn't late here all the time. Alan, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna yeah, s- try to figure out in the next 24 hours whether I want to see us take Friday off or not. But anyway, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye 
and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. They're, they're terrific. I, they're a good bunch of people. I like them all. They are my friends. Anyway, uh, that's it uh, for tonight. Uh, we have more coming back up again tomorrow. More is coming back up again. It doesn't sound good. Um, uh, we'll be having more tomorrow. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, of course, tell her I love her, all right? And by the way, if you haven't gotten a vaccination, shame on you. Go out and get one. It doesn't hurt. Okay? Bye. Bye.